Hi everyone, welcome to Paradise Wildlife Park. My name is Nikki and today we're going to be flying some of our birds for you and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them while they come out. Obviously the zoo is closed at the moment but we're still flying all of our birds every single day. We've just been joined by Tierra and Tierra is a kind of bird called a striated caracara. Now she's a really unusual species because she is a member of the falcon family. But if you've ever seen falcons before, you're probably picturing something like a peregrine falcon, which is a really, really fast bird. In fact, the fastest animal on the planet. And they can fly up to about speeds of 120 miles an hour. But they usually are very, very agile in the air and catch food in the air. Tierra, as you can see, is very at home down on the ground. And where she would be found in the wild is the Falkland Islands and the very tip of Argentina. Now what she usually does is run around down on the ground and try to attack things like penguins. Now this right here is our lovely penguin rucksack and Tierra is showing you that she is very very brave and going to grab hold of this penguin rucksack and drag it away with her. Now if we were in the wild she would be trying to attack things like rockhopper penguins. She is a very brave bird. She is not afraid of going into towns and cities where people are and that means that she's quite happy to raid their rubbish bins. So a little bit like foxes and crows here in the UK, these birds have been known as pests, just because they leave a lovely mess behind them in exactly the same way as foxes and crows do. But this is a little bit more natural for her. We've got a lovely rock pool and a bit of a beach over here. She will hopefully turn over some of these rocks with her feet, which are incredibly powerful. And she'd be looking out for limpets and crustaceans and sometimes even carrion. So anything which is washed up on the beach, which makes a nice, easy meal for her. She is a really fast running bird. Um, but she is also a very powerful flyer, which she has to be living in the Falkland Islands where it's really windy. That was Tierra, everybody. Okay, so now that Tierra has headed home, we're going to move on to a completely different kind of bird. We're actually going to go all the way to Australia, virtually, of course. We can't go there in reality right now. But we are going to bring out our laughing kookaburra. Now, he is absolutely brilliant. His name is Bombora, and he's really loud. Every time he comes out here, he likes to do a bit of a shout for us. He probably won't actually do his full laughing call, but we're going to see if we can get him to do a couple of natural behaviours for us. Here he comes. This is Bombora, everybody. Now, being a kookaburra, he is a member of the kingfisher family. They're actually the largest member of the kingfisher family, but they don't eat fish. Instead, these birds are really famous for eating things like venomous snakes and reptiles. They also eat things like frogs, and that is what we're going to be doing today. Bombora has got this lovely giant toy frog, don't worry, and he is going to show you how he would slam it in order to try to kill it. <laughs> we're going to see if he wants to let go of the frog. I mean, there you go. Good job, Bombora. <laughs> Now that's a really important behaviour for him because in the wild, if he were trying to eat a snake, as you probably know in Australia, there are lots of venomous snakes and kookaburras are not at all immune to snake venom. So they have to be really careful to make sure that when they catch a snake, the snake doesn't bite them. So they grab it by the head and they find something really hard to slam the snake against, just like Bombora is doing with our poor frog out here today. <laughs> Now we're going to see if he can slam. One more time. You want to make sure it's really dead. There you go. Good job, Bombora. And we're going to see if he wants to let go of the frog. Sadly, Bombora thinks the frog is real and that he can eat it. <laughs> they are also famous for catching food in the air. And so in a moment, we're going to try and show you how he would catch a flying insect. Now you might be wondering about their name, the laughing kookaburra. And they get that name just because of that call that they do. Now, Bombora is doing a bit of a chuckle, I suppose, while he's out here today. But um, they are often heard laughing, usually first thing in the morning. So they sometimes are called the Bushman's Alarm Clock. Now, Bombora is going to see Joanna. He's going to pop back over here and I'm going to throw a lovely piece of mouse up in the air for him. I'm going to see if he can catch it. Good job, Bombora. <laughs> So Bambora is what we call a predatory bird and that means he is a bird which eats other animals. Now we've also got lots of birds of prey here and the difference between them is that birds of prey will catch and kill their food 
using their feet and their very powerful talons. Whereas Bombora here is catching food using his beak. And that is because he is a predatory bird and not a bird of prey. So what that means is that all birds of prey are predatory birds, but not all predatory birds are birds of prey, if that makes sense. Try and get your head around that one. Okay, so that was Bombora, everybody. He was our laughing kookaburra, and he did a great job of killing our poor frog. Don't worry, he gets paid very well in rubber flies later on. Okay, right, we're gonna move on to a member of the owl family now. We have got loads of different owl species here at the park. We're really lucky, and we get to fly all of them every day in our shows. Now this owl that we're gonna be meeting next is called Moby, and she is a kind of bird called a Bengal eagle owl. Out in the wild, she would normally be found in the Indian subcontinent. They've got quite a large range, so they're found across multiple different countries, but they're really specialized at hunting in particular for things like bats. Now they're brilliant at being able to catch bats out of the air, and we're gonna to attempt to show you that here today at the zoo. Now a lot of this does depend on how good my throwing skills are. It's nothing to do with Moby, it's all about the throw. <laughs> so hopefully when she comes out, we're gonna get her to show off a brilliant catch. Now in a moment, she is gonna fly all the way out here for us. Here she comes right now. This is Moby. And while she's sitting up there, you might notice that she's got these beautiful little tufts of feathers up on top of her head. They're called her ear tufts, but they are nothing to do with her hearing. Okay, those feathers are really just there for camouflage and for decoration so that she can uh, camouflage into trees or cliff faces, anything like that. And she can also move them independently to tell us what kind of a mood she's in. Now, it's time for the catch. So we're going to see how Moby feels about trying to pluck. Well, it's not a bat today. Instead, it's half a mouse. And we're going to see if she wants to come over here and join us. And we're going to try and throw a piece of food up in the air and see what she wants to do with it. Now, she is a true bird of prey, so you'll notice she's a little bit different than Bombora in that she is going to catch this piece of food using her feet and her really powerful talons. She has got excellent eye to talon coordination. Are you ready, Moby? Here we go. Up it goes. Yeah, good job, Moby. Okay, so she rarely misses. She's an excellent catch. Now that she's down on the ground, Moby is going to show us just how she would defend her nest if she were in the wild. And that's because Bengal eagle owls, like a lot of eagle owl species, build their nests down on the ground. That might sound a little bit silly, but baby owls are incredibly clumsy. So they have to make sure that their babies are safe and don't fall out of trees, and they do that by nesting on the floor. Now if I was a predator, Moby would want to scare me away from her babies. And she would do that by being absolutely terrifying. She would run as fast as she could, open her wings, make loads of noise, and not be able to find her food. <laughs> okay, so maybe it's not really very scary, but that's because she knows I'm not a predator and I don't want that piece of mouse back. She can keep it. Now we're gonna see if Moby can do one more catch. And we're gonna throw it up in the air, you ready? Up it goes. Yeah, good job, Moby. <laughs> okay, so Moby is an excellent catch. It looks like she is going to take that piece of food up to a fence where she can eat it nice and safely, and then she's going to be making her way back home to see Joanna. Now, you might have noticed with all of our birds here today um, that they are completely free to go wherever they want, okay? We're encouraging them to come to certain points, but really, they can go anywhere they like. Now, lots of people ask us every time we do a show, what stops them from flying away? And the simple answer is nothing. Nothing stops them from flying away. They could fly away if they wanted to, but I always try and explain it to people by likening it to your pet dog. Okay, obviously these birds are not our pets. They are our work colleagues, but we train them in the same way that you would train your dog. So we, when you take your dog out for a walk, you take it off the lead. You expect that it's gonna have a nice run and it's gonna go away from you, have a little bit of an explore, but when you call it, it's gonna come back to you because you are its home and its family. And that's exactly the same with all of our birds here. We treat them like members of our family and we make sure that everything we do with them is really on their terms. We give them as much choice and as much 
control as possible to make decisions wherever it's safe for them to do so. And that means that our birds get to choose to come out here and fly every single day. If they don't want to fly one day, that's fine. They don't have to, they get all of their favorite treats anyway, and then they come out again the next day. So it's a really good system that we've got with our birds. And we're really lucky to be able to do that every day here at Paradise Wildlife Park. Now we really hope that you guys get to come and visit us again soon. At the moment we don't know when the zoo will be reopening but hopefully it will be by the summer and if so please come and join us. If not and you want to try and do something to help remember we're all still here at work we're having to look after these animals every single day trying to give them the best care. You guys can help at home just by donating on our Facebook fundraiser page or you can give us Facebook stars if you've enjoyed this content. Um, so please go along give us a like give us a star or send us a small donation anything you can it all really helps thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time bye thank you nikki thank you joanna